Cain was the first man ever to strike down another. And when the Lord came to him and said, what have you done? Cain could not hide his crime, for the voice of his brother's blood cried out from the very ground. The game series is hailed by many people because of the well-written stories of the first few World War games. Gamers could experience what it was like to fight as a soldier against the German invaders. But with seven games about this historic event, a new story had to be written. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is set in the future with modern weaponry and a machine to control the mind. If the train had reached its destination. At 7.31 a.m., a terrorist group detonated an explosive device on board this train. The incident sent back our robotics program several years. You're here to stop it. This isn't real. It can't be. What is happening to me? Right now? Right now, you're in a medically induced coma being prepped for surgery. You've got a new bit of hardware inside your head. It's called a direct neural interface, or DNI. I've got one too, that's how I'm able to communicate with you. Your DNI is what connects your mind with your new body and the larger world around you. We're connected. All of this is a simulation inside our minds. And you've got a long way to go. The problem with the DNI system is Corvus, a bug in the system, which can control the minds in which DNI is installed. It's interesting that the game's designers picked the name Corvus. A Corvus is a bird species similar to the raven. The raven is a bird often used in movies to represent death. Who is the cause of our death? Satan. After tempting Adam and Eve to eat of the fruit of the tree of life, death comes. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Then it all goes wrong. Corvus takes control of the minds of the people in whom he is installed. The interface just went very, very wrong. It was like I was inside Hall's waking nightmare. But that isn't all. There was something inside her mind. Something born at Corvus before the accident. It was fighting me every step of the way. It's manipulating Taylor and the others. It made them kill the Black Station staff and they didn't even know. I think it's getting smarter. Humans under Corvus's control are even called demons within their midst. Once under control of Corvus, the possessed humans start mumbling strange things. Listen carefully to what they say. You know it'll fry his brain. I know. I don't think you do. This is someone I know. Someone I fought alongside. You shouldn't go out like this. I'm sorry. It's okay, Andrews. I can see it. Frozen forest. A frozen forest? No, this is not a Disney movie. In Call of Duty, this is the final destination of the dead, a safe haven offered by Corvus, where the dead live on forever. That sounds too good to be true for a war game. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 has a complicated storyline, but to summarize it, the character the gamer plays with is severely injured after being attacked by a robot. The gamer thinks he is playing with his own character throughout the game but in the end, discovers that all the way through, he was playing with protagonist 
John Taylor, who relived his experiences through the player's mind. This was all made possible because of the DNI system. The player's character actually never survived the robot's attack. During the final mission in the game, John Taylor, through the player's mind, enters the frozen forest in a dream to try to destroy Corvus. In the frozen forest, John Taylor finally sees what Corvus looks like. Corvus is what we would imagine a demon or Satan himself to look like. Only the thing is, this satanic being offers life after death in a frozen forest. Again, this is a complete misrepresentation of Jesus Christ and the wonderful gift of everlasting life he offers. Eternal life at the frozen forest is not a good thing. Humans are all trapped there. They end up there because of the deceptions of Corvus and because he was able to control and possess them. John Taylor eventually manages to destroy Corvus, making sure it cannot control human minds anymore. John purges his own mind from Corvus. He cleanses his mind and sets himself and the survivors free from Corvus or the devil, providing his own salvation. No need for a savior, no need for a messiah, no need for Jesus' atonement. Taylor solves his own problem. Taylor. It really impacted on my relationship with God especially. It separates you from God and before you know it, you, you don't even think about God. You distance yourself in every way from anything to do with God. Um, and really, um, God becomes a computer game basically, because you think that in this game you are all powerful, so who needs God anyway? I mean, I can still play my computer without God. <laughs> That's the way you start to think. Begin to realise that this was destroying my relationship with my family, my mum and my other siblings, but more importantly it was destroying my relationship with God. The effect on my relationship with God was probably very lasting. Um, it lasted longer than actually playing computer games. It was taking my focus away from spiritual things. The Bible became a boring book, a book that was dull and dissatisfying because of the excitement and na unnatural world that I was putting myself in in playing computer games. It was completely effective in distracting me from the great controversy that was raging around me. I just got totally absorbed in this thing. And so I began to realize this, and I found it very difficult to break away from this habit because of how strong the addiction was that I formed over quite a period of time. And yeah, it was took me a long time to get, get out of it mentally. It was a mental hold that you get stuck in and you can't get out. However, in Christ, there is one who is stronger than any addiction. No matter how strong it is, no matter how long that we have we've had this addiction in our lives, it can be overcome. By the grace of God, this addiction was overcome. The first step that really helped me overcome this addiction was getting to the point where I realized this was my enemy, not my friend. I recognized that danger that it was to me and what it was doing to my life, even though it was something that I found pleasure in, it wasn't my friend, it was my enemy. And that was my first step in trying to overcome this addiction. Secondly, is going to God in prayer and pouring out, poured out my heart to God and said, Lord, I've got to overcome this. I can't call myself a Christian. I can't fight the battles that you would want me to fight. I can't wage successful warfare in the great controversy and have so much of my time and energies focused in playing these games. And you've got to start praying again, start reading the Bible again. That's, that was another important step for me um, because when you're playing games, you don't even read anything other than the Bible. And when you start reading the Bible, you start realizing how wrong it is and that consciousness starts to wake again and think, think with me and think ahead to the time when, by the grace of God, we can be standing on the sea of glass with the unnumbered saints and angels. 
and we look back in our life, are we going to have regrets? Are we going to regret that we wasted so much time, so much energy, in a completely unrealistic world with no point, no purpose? I want to live my life with no regrets. And I'm sure you do too. So think about it. Pray about it. Pour out your heart to God. Find a friend who you can confide in, a friend who you can be accountable to. Maybe even a, a computer gaming buddy who you can go to and say, mate, do you want to give up playing this, these computer games? Don't you think we can do better things with our time? Find someone who thinks the same as, as you do and wanting to give this up and make a decision with them. Say, no, I'm not going to waste my life and one more minute of my life doing these, these things. I'm going to find something constructive. I'm going to build better relationships with my family, with my wife, with my children. I'm going to put that time into doing what I can to save souls for God's kingdom. And as you and your friend do that, you will live your life with no regrets. And when we get to heaven, and when you look back, you'll, be, you'll see that as one of the best decisions you've made in your life. Hey YouTubers, I hope you enjoyed that video clip. It came from one of these three documentaries. We got three on this subject. They're called Controller and you can buy them at littlelightstudios.tv or you can rent them on vimeo.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell to keep being notified about new videos we come out with. And also if you want to support our ministry, click the Patreon page. And don't forget we got plenty more videos over here. See you next time guys.